Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes. Today we're talking about white balance. But before we get going on that, I got two announcements I want to make. Uh, Holga projects are going well. We've got a bunch of cameras out and pretty soon, I've heard back from some folks, we're going to be expecting the first roll of film back in. A couple things we're going to do is uh, we're gonna, I'm going to redo the website. So we're going to have the images that come back in up there so you can kind of see what people are doing. Uh, the second thing I want to announce is uh, when I get the first roll back, I will broadcast live uh, developing the first roll and we'll do that probably on Ustream or Justin TV or something like that. So if you're interested uh, in watching that, um, and we'll talk about the process of developing film again and all that, and you can kind of see what I'm doing, we'll do it live. Uh, just follow me on Twitter. Uh, my handle is twitter.com slash Ted Forbes, or you can follow the show, twitter.com slash AOP underscore podcast. And uh, keep an eye on there. You can also follow me on Facebook or Google Plus or something like that. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do a live broadcast of uh, the first role that we get back in. The other thing I want to announce is if you're in the Dallas area, Dallas, Texas, on Friday, July 29th, 2011, I'm going to be teaching a class on portrait photography and we're going to be talking about in how to do environmental portraits uh, and we're actually going to go into the galleries and do some shooting at the museum. Uh, so that's at seven o'clock. Uh, the price is it's free for the workshop but you do have to pay admission to get into the museum that night uh, so you might want to check their website and double check. But anyway that's at the Dallas Museum of Art uh, seven o'clock on Friday July 29th uh, part of their nine by nine series. So I'm looking forward to that. So if you're in the area I'd love for you to stop by uh, take the class say hello we can talk all that good stuff. So anyway white balance what we're talking about today. Uh, we're going to look at some images in a second but um, what is white balance and why would you care if you're not familiar with what white balance is um, all light has what's called a color temperature to it and so what our eye perceives as the color white can change depending on the lighting conditions now your brain kind of does some calculations and you probably don't notice it as much because if you're in something like tungsten light which is just regular indoor lighting with light bulbs uh, it casts kind of an orange cast and your brain kind of makes up that difference when you're looking at a white wall for instance and you're going to interpret it in your mind as the color white keeps you from going insane. Uh, however, cameras are not as forgiving. Uh, this was a big problem back in the film days, uh, particularly with color slide film, uh, just because it was hard to get those color casts out. And so there's different color temperatures. For instance, outdoor and bright sunlight has one color temperature. The shade has another. Uh, indoor tungsten light has an orange cast to it. Uh, and then, you know, even fluorescent lights have kind of their own color temperature as well. Um, so there's several ways around this. First of all, if you're shooting black and white, you don't have to worry about it because there is no color. So color temperature is not a problem with black and white film. Uh, back in the film days, uh, we it, there was kind of, the, you know, the big two shifts are basically daylight uh, balanced film and then tungsten lighting, you know, which is the household light bulb thing. Uh, and you could buy tungsten, you can still buy it, uh, tungsten um, uh, rated film. So it's specifically built to get rid of that indoor color cast. So if you've ever shot like color slide film and you just bought regular daylight film and you shoot it inside the evening when everybody's got the house lights on, you probably noticed a big orange cast on that. And so that tungsten rated film will get rid of that. Now with digital photography and digital cameras, your camera handles the white balance internally. Uh, the easiest way to get around this, which is what most people are going to tell you, is to shoot in raw format. Uh, and there's a number of reasons why that's really good. Uh, but one of them is, is, if you're not familiar with what raw format is, it's basically a file format that captures more like a digital negative. And so it captures the essence of the picture, but it doesn't compress it like a JPEG does, which is usually the other option on shooting on a, on a, on a uh, digital camera, sometimes TIFF files. But that digital negative retains all the color information. So you can go into Photoshop, Aperture, Lightroom, something like that, and fix that in post-production. So if you shoot indoors and the color temperature is wrong, you could go in and actually make that color shift without losing data. So that's a good way to go to shoot raw. And I hear a lot of photographers recommend doing that method. I don't particularly agree with it. And there's the main reason why is a time issue. And for me, I like to get as many things right on the camera when I'm shooting as possible because post-production, all those little things start to add up into the time that you're going to spend in post. And to me, I would rather have that time back to do other things like shoot, do this podcast, things like that. So, in, you know, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but all those things do add up. And I just find it easier to get that color correction going in camera, even if I'm shooting raw. It's one less thing to do in post-production, uh, even though it's certainly possible shooting raw format to change that 
that later. Uh, so anyway, typically what we're talking about here is, is having the accurate representation of color. So if I have the white balance set correctly, so if this wall behind me is white and you know I'm filming this on a Canon 5D and so it's white balanced and it appears white to you, probably a little off white because the way I'm just using window light today for the, uh, for the lighting in here and it's actually in a shadow back there. Uh, but anyway, so we've got that white balanced. The, the idea is to get an accurate color representation out of everything. So things that are red, if you have an apple in the photo, then that red is accurately represented as the same red that you would see it uh, in real life or what that red really is. Um, there are some effects that you can do with white balancing techniques. For instance, uh, if you shoot outdoors on a beach, typically, something like that, uh, you can actually warm that tone up a little bit. So rather than shooting daylight, you might match it into a cloudy setting or something like that. Uh, and it'll give you a nice warm light over the whole thing. So that's, the, typically you see a lot of professionals do this because it kind of, the picture is not supposed to be an accurate color representation is more of you know the type of image where you're trying to set a mood and so maybe you want that beach scene to look warmer and have kind of a bronze tone to it and i'm not talking about like doing a um, you know a color tone or, or something like that but i'm talking about using the white balance to just bring out those those warm colors and, and make make the whole effect warmer uh consequently if you're shooting and it's not winter right now so i don't i can't get an example for you uh we're very hot in the middle of summer right now um where i am but you can shoot, if you're shooting ice or snow scenes and you want that to actually look more cold or, or have a, a cool color cast over the top, you can actually, if you're shooting outdoors, flip it into the shade setting uh, on your camera and you can actually kind of get that. Now I think, the again, the right way to go is to just make sure that white balance is set. Use a custom white balance setting. I'll talk about that in a second and then make those tweaks in post. Those are a little easier to do. Uh, if you're shooting with film, particularly slide film, something like that, uh, then you're going to want to make that adjustment either with the film type, having tungsten rated film, or the other way to do it with, uh, with, with film is to use filters on the lens. I don't recommend that for digital photography, but you know you can use a fluorescent filter or a shade filter or something like that. Uh, there are a number of filters you can buy to either warm the, the, uh, the color up or cool it down, uh, one or the other. Now, on digital cameras, typically, and we're gonna go over the computer in a second and look at a little of this, but on digital camera, <clears throat> and it's a little beyond the scope of what I'm doing here today because I'm sure viewers have all kinds of different digital cameras, uh, but what you want to try to do is if it has a custom white balance setting and you want to read your manual because they all kind of do this differently. Uh, Canon, the way you set it there is you just take an image and then you have to go back into the menu and select that image off the memory card, whereas Nikon has a way of saying, okay, I'm ready to set it, and then it lets you take a photo right there and it automatically puts those settings. To do that, all you need is something that's white in the photo, and the, the camera will actually go in and find what is the most white thing in that image, and it will set the color balance to that. It's really easy to do. Figure out how to do it. It makes a world of difference. It takes two seconds to do before you start shooting, uh, particularly if you're doing something where you're actually just going to be not capturing raw and going straight to JPEG format. And the reason I say that is that sometimes, uh, especially photographers who shoot a lot of events, uh, they don't want to have, uh, this is all, you know, it's a little bit subjective because some photographers do go shoot raw on events and there's nothing wrong with that. But others don't because of the processing time that it takes after the photo shoots through. So if you're shooting a wedding or something like that and you're the type of photographer that is going to shoot in JPEGs, JPEGs, it's more of a hard file type. It's not going to retain the versatility in that color information. So that's another reason why you really want to have it right, right off the bat. And if I'm doing something like that, I would probably go change the, the uh, custom white balance uh, if I move the room, if I move the lighting, anything like that, just reset it. It really only takes a second once you know how to do it. Uh, look at your camera manual. If you don't have a camera manual, go find one online. It's really the most important thing you can do is, is know how your camera operates. Uh, I don't have the time here or the support to be able to go through every camera manufacturer and show you how to do that. But uh, go figure it out. It is easy and custom white balancing is the way to go. Now what I want to do is we're going to go over to the computer. We're going to check out a couple images and I'm going to show you how we can play with the white balance to achieve different effects and different you know you can see what's going on there so come on over let's take a look okay so white balance um, for these examples here I've got four images we're gonna look at and I'm actually using Apple's aperture program here and you could easily do this in Lightroom you could do it in Photoshop you could probably do it in Photoshop elements uh, I think even iPhoto will do this anything that allows you to make adjustments on an image now remember I mentioned earlier uh, that you want to be shooting raw because if you shoot in the raw file format it's going to retain more color information so when you have to do dramatic shifts um, you are able to retain more color information now this will work on JPEG but if you start to push it to extremes, you could experience some quality loss. However, sometimes stuff's already been pre-done. You didn't shoot it, something, you know, there are reasons why, but you can do this on JPEGs. But anyway, assuming that, uh, you know, getting that out of the way, you want to do raw. But uh, let's look at a couple things here. Uh, this is a... Um, 
a shot that I did in Indiana a few years ago. It's a, a barn out near Goshen. And uh, it is a heavy blue cast. And this is a very common problem for a camera. Now, this was an overcast day. Uh, I had the camera set to auto, I'm pretty sure. And this is what I got. Now, if I'm going to make some adjustments on this, um, what happened is you have a heavy blue cast because the light uh, temperature didn't match with the color one, with the camera wanted to see. So if I go over to adjustments here, um, on the adjustments tab, under adjustments, uh, excuse me, under presets, I'm going to go under white balance because I want you to see the differences in these. Now, if I select white balance, one cool thing that Aperture does is it will actually go through here and give you a little preview of what each one is going to look like. So here's the daylight setting. Uh, here's what a cloudy setting looks like, which makes it a little more gray, which is more accurate in that color representation. Uh, there's a shade setting, which starts to tint it a little. If I start going into tungsten, it makes it really blue. This is a really common problem people have. Sometimes they'll accidentally set their white balance and all their shots are coming out this blue. Uh, you know, that's what the problem is and, and probably a lot of fixing in post. Um, fluorescent, etc. flash. This is a tough scene because it's all kind of a blue cast, so you never really shift to much of an orange. Um, if I go to a cloudy setting on this, it's going to take a second, and it's this is a little more accurate uh, as to what the image is supposed to look like, what the accurate color settings are. Let's go back under presets, and I can remember I was we were talking about uh, achieving effects with white balance. If I select the shade setting, it makes it the the uh, the the computer processor think that it's just a little more blue cast than it is so it introduces a little orange to to combat that or a little bit of yellow and so you end up getting just a little more color now this is less accurate but it's more pleasing to the eye it warms it up a little bit if you want to get super accurate, um, typically what you'll want to do is over back on the white balance tab, and most applications have a little eyedropper tool near the white balance. And what this does is if you select this and come over to the image, it gives me a little loop down here, and it wants me to select a neutral gray in this image. And you can select a white, you can select a neutral gray, something like that. Um, if I go down here and select just like this little patch of ice snow down here and select that, you can see that it kind of warmed it up. It didn't do much difference. Here, let's reset it so you can see. So here's the blue overcast. And let me go grab some of that snow again. And you can see that what this does is it forces it into something that's more natural looking. Now you can further tweak this. It gives me two sliders. There's a temperature slider and a tent slider. So if I move the temperature slider over more towards the blue, you're going to get the ugly thing that we were talking about earlier. And you can see when I push this, this actually is a JPEG and you start to lose uh, data in there. Um, and if I bring it over to the yellow side, it starts to really warm it up a little bit. Now this is not realistic, but you might find it looks good to actually warm that up. This is a snow scene, so it's, you know, yeah. Uh, it's really lacking color. It's same with the green and the magenta. Now this really is all dependent on what flavor you want in the end. Uh, sometimes you shoot a snow scene, you want it to look cold, you want it to look um uh, you know, um, kind of desolate. Uh, other times you might want to warm that up. Um, so it just depends. That's where the aesthetic, um, you know, the art of it comes in and what you as a photographer want to get out of that image. But that's basically how you're going to correct white balance on things. Uh, let's look at another example here. These heads I shot at the Louvre in Paris and uh, the camera did a pretty good job. I may have did a custom white balance in here. I honestly don't remember. But again, if I move this blue slider, you start to get the tint. And this is actually a tough shot because there was a window near here. So you're getting two different colors of light. And it's not so bad in this photo, but sometimes it can really be bad. And this is kind of what naturally it'll look like. And you can see that on these heads, the uh, there's a blue tint to them from the outdoor light and the tungsten light is what the camera may have tried to go for, something like that. Again, what I want to do is I'm going to go through here. Let's grab the eyedropper, pick a neutral gray. Actually, I'm going to go for a white. I'm going to go for a white on this label down here. And if I select that, then it then it brings it down. This is a little bit warm. I can cool it back if I mess with the temperature a little bit and I bring the, the degrees up in Kelvin. Now, if I start going too blue, I start seeing that outdoor light reflect in the head. So this would be a really tough image to get exactly color corrected, but I can warm it up if I go the other way. You might find that something like this is interesting if I really make this warm. Uh, consequently, you could also make it really cool. It's all up to you. Um, this is how you would use white balance to kind of interpret the color in the image and this is like I said it's all um, it's all completely subjective and uh, you know unless you're going for something that's supposed to be an accurate color representation so if you're reproducing artwork or something like that that's when you want color charts and things so you have a point of reference in there but that's basically how you do it uh, another gray overcast shot uh, if I bring the eyedropper down here I'll, I'll grab some of the snow down here and warmed it up just a little bit that was that was fairly close um, you know it's overcast so there's not a lot of color there but I could warm this up 
and, and by just bringing the uh, temperature slider over towards the L a little bit, maybe I'll bring a little magenta in there too. And it is not an accurate representation of the real color anymore, but it does warm it up and create some interest. And this is, you know, this is this is up to you as an artist. Probably what I would do is it's 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 kind of it's it's an interesting cast, but probably what I would do is bring the levels in, bring the blacks in, crush them, and create a lot more contrast in this image. And then that looks to me a little cooler with that kind of color cast that goes over the top. So again, you would play with this in with you know your normal uh, workflow of adjusting levels, highlights, shadows, things like that. So we'll look at one more here. Uh, this is an interesting shot because this is sunrise uh, in Indiana again, and you know the sun was just barely coming up. It's early in the morning. Uh, I woke up and thought, wow, what a great sunrise, and, and tried to capture it. Not a great shot in the world, but I thought it was cool at the time. Uh, and again. This is a weird one because you kind of have a split uh, lighting uh, colors here because you've got this really bright orange coming up with the sun. But I shot this. I was kind of in the shade from some of these trees. Anyway, it's kind of strange, and sometimes you'll run across that. These are tough situations to overcome. This image doesn't look so bad because it has a sunset, which is supposed to be really colorful anyway. <clears throat> but at times, if you're shooting somewhere like indoors with a big window, so you have tungsten light and outdoor light, those can be really hard to fix. Um, and generally speaking, um, I would, if it's a setup studio type situation with a shot, I would try to fix that before I went on. Uh, anyway, same thing. We can go in here and grab some of the snow for a neutral gray. And yeah, it warmed up the uh, snow in the homes down here just a little bit. And that, you know, it's 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 minor differences here. But uh, let me reset that so you can see the difference. If you if you look down here, kind of in the bottom of the image, we see these two houses in the in the street. When I reset that image, it goes a little colder. You know, a little more greens in there almost. So again, I can do that. You can also accentuate this if I really wanted to warm it up some. It starts becoming false color at that point. To me, it makes the sunset look really good, but it loses the cold feeling of this being in winter. So I would probably bring it back the other way and make this a little bit colder. So it's like you're almost bringing the shade setting in here almost, um, you know, as far as the color, color temperature goes. And this has, you know, you still retain the, the sunrise, but we made the snow scene a lot more blue. Um, another thing I might do on something like this is bring the midtones around. So I make the, just the highlights darker. So they're not as accentuated we can actually go into shadows and highlights and I can well, I'm bring them back. We want to reduce them, but anyway, you can do this. You can go into your levels and kind of, kind of mess around with your curves. If you're in Photoshop, bring the blacks up a little bit. So it looks, it looks earlier in the morning than maybe it was. And, and uh, probably should have brought the exposure off on the camera just a little bit too. And we can actually bring that down in the post. Again, I think this is a JPEG that I shot on my D40. So we're, we're starting to lose a lot of detail and rendition information. But anyway, you get the idea. And that is basically um, how you can manipulate white balance for effect or for accuracy, depending on what it is you're going after. Okay, so that's white balance for you. Um, this has kind of been a rush overview, I understand. Uh, but I think the best way to learn this is to go out and try to actually get some photos yourself. Um, try to go in and use your white balance settings to learn how to get a custom white balance and learn how to go for accurate color representation first. I think that's the most important thing. Once you kind of have that down, then going in and trying to find ways to do effects. And that might work for you. If you're doing film, you don't have any choice but to do it uh, You know, with either filters or uh, film type. But if you're shooting digital, you can go into Lightroom, Aperture, something like that, or even Photoshop and tweak those settings once you're done to try to get kind of some effects. Um, with that. So anyway, uh, that's about it for today. Remember, Holga Projects, uh, follow me on Twitter. I will make the announcement of when we are going to live broadcast the first roll of film that comes back, which ought to be pretty cool. And also remember the workshop. So if you were in Dallas, July 29th, 2011, 7 o'clock p.m. at the Dallas Museum of Art, uh, just go to the visitor services desk. They'll tell you where to go. It is free. You do have to pay admission to get in the museum that night, though. But I am teaching the uh, environmental portraits class. So we're actually going to look at some cool stuff. We're going to look at some work. Uh, Arnold Newman, people like that who did these kind of environmental type portraits. Then we're going to go into the galleries and kind of, uh, you know, work on some of our own using the art that's there. So ought to be a lot of fun. Once again, this has been the Art of Photography, and thank you for watching.